Okay, we're going to talk about the parallel between Daniel 3, the beast that never, the image that Nebuchadnezzar made, and the beast in Revelation. Uh, I believe that these are parallels, and this is why I'm sharing it, and I think it's important for this time we live in. Uh, you've got Daniel 3, verse 1. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, the height of which was 60 cubits, which is 90 feet, and its width 6 cubits, which is 9 feet. And he set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And then it goes through and talks about how he set up to make a law that they must bow down and worship this when the music is played. And, uh, which you see in verse 5, uh, that the moment you hear the music, you, you are to fall down and worship it. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego won't. And this, we start in verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he, he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage, and he had Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown in the fire. You can read the rest of chapter 3 uh, <coughs> about how he ends up in the, they end up in the fire, and they're not burned, and there's a third person, or a fourth person there with them. And so you have this, that... <coughs> And then we look at Revelation 13, talking about a beast being worshipped. It says in, in uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse uh, 16, he causes all small and great, he causes all the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on the right hand or on their forehead. And he provides that no one who is able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark of the, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. And it talks about the 666. But, uh, may, we go back to verse 14 says, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth because of the signs which is given to him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image up to, the, to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. And it was given to him, given to him to give breath to the image of the beast so the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image here see image of the beast to be killed so here again we have a threat of them being people being killed because they will not worship the image of the they will not worship the beast I mean, the the Hebrews were were obeying the part in the commandments that says you shall not have any wor worship any graven images, uh, and uh, that that's in Exodus twenty, and it's also the commandments are also restated in Deuteronomy five. So we have the of not worshiping. 
but it talks about those who don't it goes on to say talk about those who do not worship the beast shall be killed however you um the the problem with well well you look at the mark part of the mark here is you know if the beast is Islam and they make an image um you know you're gonna either either convert or die kind of like they did in the Crusades only worse uh, but it's in the in the bulls of wrath it talks about those who those who worshiped the image uh, those who were part of one of the bulls is that uh, they they uh, had pain that they received a boil it says in Revelation 16 verse 2 so the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth and it became lonesome and malignant sore to the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image thou shalt not have any other gods before me so that's part of the wrath and those that that wouldn't worship a lot of them were killed so we're gonna have to make a choice just like Shadrach Meshach and Abednego did back then and God will protect some undoubtedly Yahweh is powerful he can protect people divinely so we need to look at a choice and history repeats itself what we don't learn from his story history his story we are destined to repeat it and we're repeating we repeat a lot of the things that the mistakes that Israel did Paul talks about in 1st Corinthians 10 about all these things that they did were written down for an example to us to tutor us to show us that the the Torah is the instructions for worship and that's why they are important is so that we don't worship any false beast we don't worship these false things so here's just something to be aware of and uh, look into and search the scriptures to don't just take my word for it, but search the scriptures.